Great morning. You're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. Well, the, the title of this morning's podcast is The Early Bird. Now, those of you who know the other side of that phrase probably completed it in your head. The early bird gets the worm, right? And so for those of you who may not have ever heard that before, that basically means the person who's up, who gets up early, or the person who arrives early, or the person who is prepared. When it says they get the worm, that means they're on it. They get what's available. Um, Say if you are, some of us will be getting ready to go uh, shopping or Black Friday shopping or holiday shopping. If you're there early, you're the one who will get the deal, right? Well, in that same way, I want to encourage you to be the early bird who makes the decision. Like Proverbs 23 and 7 tells us that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I want to encourage you to make a decision early in your day. Sometimes we make decisions early in our day subconsciously, right? I want to encourage you to make conscious decisions. Decisions is what we're talking about across the different platforms this week. Um, So far, we've been talking about informed decisions, um, the importance of decisions. I want to encourage you today to make a decision like first thing in the morning that you're going to have a great day. Um, I use what I call declarations. Some people call them affirmations. I've spoke about them here on the podcast. There's no magic to them because first of all, we don't believe in magic. There's no... um, Hey, um, I got to say it a specific way. It's about setting your mind to expect to have a great day, to expect to see miracle signs and wonders, to expect to be at your best in every area of your life, especially spiritually. So one of the things I recognized, um, my son brought this to my attention. We would go into uh, wherever And sometimes if I was not careful, I brought the spirit that, or I allowed room for a spirit that was resting in one place to come along with me. How did I do that? It's because when I walked into that place, the person who did not give me good customer service, who mistreated me, whatever it was, I took that with me in a place that I should not have. Now, we're not wrong to acknowledge, hey, I didn't get the best service in a situation or someone said something wrong or mistreated us. We're not wrong for acknowledging that. But we have to be careful to guard our hearts and to prepare our minds every single day. Because let me give you an example, right? You might be thinking that's not really a big deal. It kind of is. Think about this. Think about the last time you went into a place and your barista got your coffee wrong. Or you went into a place and maybe someone didn't do something the way you asked them to. And you professionally, kindly addressed them. But what you got back in return was rudeness and they were not uh, professional towards you, right? What happened next? What what happened next? If we're not careful, we can take a one, uh, a 30 second, a 15 second interaction with someone or something can happen and we can make a subconscious decision to allow that thing to ruin our day and to affect our spirit. So here's a basic example. So say for instance, you walk into a place and you're not treated properly. Now you walk out and you call your best friend, you call your mama, you telling everybody at work all day long about the horrible service that you received. How does the rest, of, how does that affect the rest of your day? You might think it's no big deal, But what that thing has done, it has just shifted your mindset to possibly look for negativity throughout the entire day. So what does that mean? Where does that leave you? That can leave you looking for the negative in everything. Which means that as you go through your day, now your boss says something to you. Or a co-worker says something to you next. And you respond with something like, oh man, this is one of those days. Or I hate Mondays. Or um, oh, it, this is going to be um, a horrible day, right? But when you came out of your home or when you left your home, 
you weren't in that type of spirit. You weren't in that place. See, the, the, the danger to that is that we can miss opportunities in our days, opportunities to let other people see Christ in us. We can miss opportunities to speak faith over a situation that could have changed had we been uh, more discerning and preparing ourselves for our day. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that I know what's going to happen in my entire day um, and that my declarations stop things that are not good or negative or that are um, maybe disappointing from happening. What I am saying is that when we make a decision at the beginning of our day, that we're going to have a great day. I make a decision that I'm going to stand in faith. I make a decision that I'm going to be productive today. Um, I make a decision in my mind that there will be peace in my home today. When I make decisions at the beginning of the day, I promise you, it changes the trajectory of my entire day. Thus, if we're able to change the traje trajectory of every day of our lives, then we're literally changing our lives. We're changing the lives of the people in our home, our family members, our co-workers. Um, everywhere that we go, we're changing the lives of people. Even that barista on the other side of the counter that rudely got angry with you because she put some chocolate drizzle on your, um, I, I don't know what are you guys, coffee drinkers drink, macchiato or frappuccino or whatever, as opposed to caramel. Now, she doesn't know that you have a chocolate allergy. She just knows that she thinks that you should drink it anyway, right? Um, but when you can return to her kindness, when you can maybe walk out and say, you know what, I'm going to scoop that drizzle off or I'm going to scoop that cream off my coffee and drink it anyway. Not saying that you have to. Not saying that you have to settle for something that you did not get. This is just an example. But what I am saying is when we make a decision that today... I'm going to be an oracle of God. Today, I am going to be a vessel of God that he can use. Then that same barista who yesterday or three days before when I didn't make those conscious decisions could have gotten um, some attitude back. She's not going to get that. And what if she's hurting? What if she has decided that her life is not worth living? What if she or he has decided that today is going to be a horrible day. But you've decided that today is going to be a great day. And you walk into that place no matter how you're treated. And you give back the love of God. Consider how you could have changed that person's life. Literally. All because you got up early and made a decision. Or even just made a decision early in your day. So, because I won't put a stipulation on a time frame of when you should get up, right? I've had people ask me that before. You you get up early, but what time is early? And you want to start to pattern your life after someone else's or pattern a certain thing. There's nothing wrong with, again, getting instructions, getting information, uh, saying, hey, this is what time I'm up in the morning. And this is how I pray. And this is how this changes, you know, my life. But early can be for someone else noon because they work the night shift. But the minute that you're up, I want to challenge you over the next seven days to make a conscious decision to pay attention to the thoughts that are most prevalent to you in the morning. Examine them. It doesn't take it doesn't usually take us long. Right. For me, my, I wake up to either two ways. I either wake up with a song in my spirit or wake up with the battle in my mind. Not because I didn't do um, enough the night before to put enough things in my ear gates and that kind of stuff. It just, it differs. I'm either going to have a song in my spirit. Sometimes before I wake up in the morning, it's like there's songs in my spirit and I literally, my spirit wakes up singing, right? And then there are other mornings where my spirit wakes up and immediately I have to decide, okay, what's happening here? All right, what, what is truth about the thought that came to my mind immediately? If there's no truth, then I have to consciously make a decision to change my thought pattern, to change the route that my, the neural pathway that my thoughts are traveling. It may sound simple, right? Well, this simple decision today can change literally the trajectory of your day and the trajectory of your life. 
If you want to hear more about decisions, how they affect us, how we can make better decisions, how we can be more wise in our decision making, then you can follow us on um, Instagram, Facebook, um, uh, YouTube. We're at Vivian Bell Com. That's Vivian Bell, my first and last name, C-O-M. And um, we're also can be found on those platforms and now on TikTok and uh, Pinterest at Minding What Matters. And then also at MWM Now One. And you can find us there at Facebook, Instagram. But you can also subscribe at MindingWhatMattersNow.com. Um, and there you'll get updates, emails. And don't worry, we do not overload your email box. Um, but you can get emails, uh, blog posts, all of those things. There's more information that you'll get from us throughout the rest of this week. You can find us on LinkedIn, pretty much everywhere I am on social media. We will be discussing decisions. Decisions are important. It's important that we make informed ones. It's important that we make those that God would have for us to make. And it is important that we decide every single day to have faith in God, to believe him for big things and to do it at the start of our day, to do it at the start of our day. There are places in the Bible where it tells us that Jesus got up early and he went away to pray. And so as I was preparing for this podcast today, it just made me think that literally Jesus had to go away to get his mindset in order. He had to go away to get his mindset in order. He had to decide that, hey, I'm still in this fight of saving these people. (laughs) I'm still going to walk this thing out where I'm going to go to this cross. I'm going to save their souls. But he had to make a decision every single day. He had to make a decision moment by moment when he is carrying that cross and it got too heavy for him in the physical realm. When he was getting nailed to that cross, when they pierced him in his side, he had to make a decision to stay there. He didn't make that decision in the moment they were putting those nails in his hands. Because I like to just know or believe that if he made that decision just at that moment when they put the nails in his hands, well, they might not have got the nails in his hands. Because if I had to decide in that moment whether or not I'm getting nailed to a cross, I'm going to save these people's souls, it probably wouldn't have happened. But before he came, he was in agreement that this is the mission. This is what I'm doing. He decided that his father's will would be the thing that he completed. He made that decision and he made it over and over again. And even after he was in the uh, Garden of Gethsemane and he went away to pray to say, hey, let this cup pass from me. His decision to already do the will of God was what was in his heart. That was the underlying ultimate decision that he made early before he ever came into the flesh of man through a virgin to save our souls the decision was made what are the decisions you're making about your life what are the decisions you're making about your soul what are the decisions that you're making day in and day out about how you will reflect the heart of God because see When you make a decision that I'm going to save my marriage, then (laughs) when your spouse acts crazy, does something nuts, you make the decision to keep praying. You don't respond based on what they do. Doesn't mean that you, again, have to accept abuse, disrespect, any of those things, but your responses are seasoned with faith, the word of God, and the preparation that came as you made the decision every single day to still pray for them, to still believe God for their salvation. We can't wait to the moment that a decision needs to be made to make decisions. Yes, there will be things that pop up in our day that we didn't plan. And so we have to make a decision. But our our main decisions at the beginning of the day, it will be the thing that we draw from in those instant moments where we have to make a decision quickly. Because I made a decision that God's going to be first today. I made a decision that I'm going to let God use me today. I made a decision that I'm going to live by faith and not by sight today. And so what does that mean? When I'm in a moment where it looks like what I was believing God for, what I declared over my life isn't happening. 
I can look at that thing, that circumstance, that situation, even while standing in the midst of it and say, nah, that's not truth. I might be able to even feel that thing, physically feel it, uh, uh, emotionally feel it, right? But it can't be real to me because I've already made a decision to believe what God spoke to me when I woke up or has spoken to me throughout the years or continues to confirm in my life, right? Faith is a choice. Believing is a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. There are choices that we have to decide we're going to make before we have to make them. I pray today that you will make the choice to believe God, that you'll also make the choice to believe in you because see, God believes in you. So make the choice to believe in you, to know that with God, all things are possible, that he strengthens you to do all things and that in this day, I'm going to fulfill the will of God in my life. Well, you've listened to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed she who believes. I pray that you have the most amazing remainder of the week.